Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, we're gonna look at hot tub pipe. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so hot tub pipe. Well, it's certainly one of the, the less glamorous videos that I'm gonna make, but it's certainly important. You've gotta get the pipe work right in order for your hot tub to work. So, where are we gonna start? Firstly, we're gonna start with the sizes of hot tub pipe that you're gonna need in your DIY hot tub builds. So I'm not gonna cover all the different hoses and things like that that you get on plastic shell hot tubs. I'm gonna focus on the pipe that we're gonna need for our block built, concrete built, ICF blocks, poured forms, all of our DIY hot tub builds. This is what we're gonna focus on on this video. So what pipe do we need? Well, firstly, we're gonna need imperial pipe. So this is pipe that is measured in inches, and this is very different to metric pipe. So as you can see behind me, you can see the sizes that we're gonna need. We're gonna need one inch for the gunite water pipe. We're gonna need one and a half inch for the air pipe. We're gonna need two inch, for the water that's gonna go round the tub, and we're gonna need two and a half inch to go through the walls that form part of those gunite bodies. So we need those four different sizes. They are very much imperial, they are in inches, and the metric equivalents are not the same. So a 50 mil pipe is not the same. As you can see, the sizes are behind me here as a one and a half inch. Likewise, the 65 mil is not the same as two inch. You can see on the sizes here that they are different. So make sure that you are buying imperial pipe. That imperial pipe needs to be to American standards. So all hot tubs are American sizes. So all the parts, all the fittings, everything is based around the American standard, not a European standard. So does this matter? Well, it actually does because for example, European two and a half inch pipe, if we break this down into millimeters, is 75 millimeters in size. But as you can see behind me, the American spec is 73 millimeters. So those two millimeters do make a difference. They don't fit into the housings. So be very careful when you're purchasing your pipe that you are buying American standard and it must be imperial. So you're building a hot tub, you've got a vast amount of metric pipe available, whether it's 65, 75 uh, in, uh, millimeters, and you, you want to combine this, can we do it? Well, yes, we can. What I don't recommend at all is you try and use metric pipe and converters around the hot tub itself. Going to and from the control room definitely is something that you can do. If the metric pipe, for example, is, is cheaper and more readily available, you can convert that with, it's generally with a coupler. So you would have say a two inch on one side and that would go over to a, a 63 millimeter um, metric pipe or maybe even a 65 millimeter. And you, you can convert those over no problem with a coupler. But I don't recommend trying to do this between the gunite bodies, for example, I've had one customer, uh, you may have seen on the channel, Francisco, he actually did this and he highly recommends against doing it for anybody else. It was uh, a total mess, if you like. There were so many joints to make and there's so many possibilities for leaks when you're doing that. So definitely don't use converters around the, the certainly the top or the, uh, the jets on your tub. What rating of pipe should we be using? Well, we need pressure rated pipe and we need something around the 100 PSI mark is pretty standard. And you can tell on the pipe itself, it's generally marked. So for example here, I've got a small piece of one and a half inch pipe, and it actually says on here that this is rated to uh, 65 PSI. So anything from the sort of 50 upwards mark is totally fine. And certainly on the airlines, there's not as much pressure as there is on the, on the water lines. But you must use pressure rated pipe. This is not uh, drainage pipe for a, for a house, for example. It must be pressure rated. In terms of the, the ratings, uh, they often are expressed as classes. So class C or class D are totally fine to be used on your hot tub builds. 
What about Schedule 40 or Schedule 80? Well, Schedule 80, you don't need. That's way too high a rating and it's really expensive. So let's focus on Schedule 40. So what is Schedule 40? Schedule 40 refers to the actual wall thickness of the pipe. So this here is a piece of one inch Schedule 40. And I don't know if you can see on the video here, but the wall thickness is, is actually quite thick. This is uh, around about a four to five millimeter thick wall. And it's that wall thickness that is dictated by the schedule. You don't need to use Schedule 40 all the way around your hot tub. Going through the gunites, if you're on two and a half inch, it'd be advisable to use Schedule 40. Uh, if you're on two inch and converters, you can use that Class C or Class D, that's totally fine as well. But Schedule 40 just refers really to the thickness of the, the walls on the pipe itself. The exterior or the, the, the exterior diameter doesn't change, so it's still one inch from side to side, it's just a bit thicker on the wall itself. The next question I get asked an awful lot is, should I use rigid or flexible, which is kind of semi-rigid pipe. It's, it's not really uh, that flexible, but it does have a little bit of give and is slightly more forgiving. So rigid or flexible? Well, personally, I would say use rigid. Rigid forces you to make a good joint. It forces you to be more accurate because it's not forgiving in any way. Remember, with any of the joints that are made, a good joint that's made well, that's made correctly, that's not forced in, will not leak. A joint that's made badly, it's on an angle, you've forced it because it's not quite right, eventually this will leak and you will have to cut it out and you'll have to make it again. What I find with the flexible pipe is you can force it a little bit more, so definitely has more chance of actually leaking in the future. I used Flexible on my own build and I did have quite a few leaks because I wasn't making those joints correctly and I was being, I'd been able to force it because there was a bit of give in it. So I would definitely recommend moving forward that anybody starting a brand new build, go with a rigid pipe, make the joints correctly and you won't have any leaks. Supporting your pipes is really, really important. So if you think a piece of pipe when you are holding it, you know, whether it's a six foot, or two meter length, doesn't weigh a great deal. You fill that full of water and try again, and it's a huge difference. Okay, water is heavy. And if you're putting lots of it into your pipes, you must make sure that your pipes are supported. Otherwise, what can happen is pressure on those joints, again, it will lead to leaks. So properly supported pipework, use metal ties to, to pin it to the, the walls themselves. If you're running along the floor, make sure they're supported underneath with gravel. It just means that those pipes aren't gonna move when they're full of water and heavy, and they're not gonna put excessive pressure on any of the joints that's gonna cause you leaks in the future. And finally, I'm gonna finish this video with how to make the perfect joint. But before I do, please, any questions, hit me up in the comments. Give me a like, subscribe to the channel. It keeps me motivated to make these videos. And as always, I appreciate the view. So how do we make the perfect joint? Well, firstly, you're gonna to want to rough up both the end of the pipe and the actual fitting with a piece of sandpaper or a piece of glass paper. Just removes any of the grease that can be left behind from the moldings that these come out of. Next step, with a marker, you're gonna measure how far in a perfect world it is to the end of the joint that you're gonna make. So how far will the pipe go into the actual fitting? And it's a good idea to, to make those marks so that you've got a guide when you're put, forcing it on, holding it in place, you know exactly how far or how much of the pipe has gone into the fitting. So it's always a good idea to mark where you need. Next, if you're on a angle, it's a good idea to put a couple of lines that you're gonna line up if you're gonna twist in the pipe and the fitting. You want those two lines that you've made to line up at the end so you have the perfect angle that you may need. Again, it's just good practice to actually mark them up. When it comes to making the joint, the PVC pipe cement, you're gonna put pipe cement around the pipe, you're gonna put pipe cement around the fitting. And when you put those together, you're gonna to want to twist them together, push them, hold them for a few seconds, and then you're gonna wipe off any of the excess from around the 
the edges. The reason that we twist the connections when we put them in is to prevent what we call channeling. So channeling is where the glue is forced in a straight line and you have you know, glue, you then have a area without any of that solvent glue on, so it's dry, and then you've got glue again. What happens? You get a drip through the dry area. So the joint is not made correctly. So when you're putting those couplers onto your pipe, Make sure you twist, wipe off any excess, and you will have a perfect joint that won't leak. Hope you found this short video useful. As always, I appreciate the view. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.